rsync is a very beautiful thing because you don't have to rely on dragging and dropping files from one NAS to the other. You don't have to rely on, you know, copying things manually. It essentially lets you sync two different folders on in two different places, whether they be in your house on two different NAS units, like I'm gonna do here, or whether they be your NAS here, and then a, you know, another server, computer, or NAS that's located elsewhere. And a lot of people use this for security backup. They get one NAS themselves, and then they have another NAS that's somewhere else, and then you can rsync one NAS to the other. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because I grabbed a new NAS. This is the ASUS Store Locker Store 4 Gen 2 AS6704T. Now, the reason I like this one is we have two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on the back. This is a copy of Ghost in the Shell 4K. It's 50 gigabytes from the Blu-ray. It's huge, it's beautiful. It's got that nice grain and everything that you had from the older stuff that had like celluloid. Now, the transfer speeds with a one gigabit connection were over seven minutes, close to seven and a half. But when I used the 2.5 gigabit on the back of the ASUS Tor, it transferred that entire 50 gigabyte file in under three minutes. So as you can see there, you know, over seven minutes for gigabit versus under three minutes for, you know, the 2.5 gigabit ethernet, it really, really comes in handy when you're transferring an entire NAS. It took hours and hours and hours, but it would have taken days and days and days were I using gigabit ethernet. The other thing that's nice about this is it barely uses any power. As you can see, the unit's on right now, and I've got it hooked up to my uh, little watt meter here, and that's all the power it's using, that's it. So compared to like a regular computer, a lot of times if you build a NAS on your own, it's just using a fraction of the power. So low power is a, you know, important thing when you have a machine that's always on like this. So now let's get down to business and get this R-Sync going. So what we're doing here is using R-Sync. This is the old, whenever you see this screen, we're on the old NAS and we're going to be moving to the new NAS, which has this pixel art waterfall background. So that's old, new. I need to move over most of these, like my games. I've got my media as well. I want to keep all of that. So if you have Docker, and you wanna be able to copy it over, just to make sure nothing changes. The first thing I do before I start copying things is I come over here and I click on my installed apps and I make sure that Plex and Jellyfin and anything that's working you know, in the background is turned off. I'm also gonna turn off my Docker engine. So that's off. It's not a huge deal, but you know, it makes it a little bit easier. That's so what we're gonna to need to do is come over here to our, our file explorer we're gonna to need to create some new shares. It's pretty easy to do. We just click on the create new share folder and it'll bring up our access control. And from here we can add more share folders. I've already added these in. You know, you can click here and type whatever name for your new share folder. And I generally go back and forth and just make sure that I have all the shares I want on my, you know, my old NAS, my new NAS. So now I've got the folders where things can go. Now we need to make sure that rsync is turned on by clicking on our services right here. And then we'll look at rsync. Enable the rsync server, yes indeed. Show you how this works. Now, the backup module is essentially an rsync set of instructions that says, hey, we can backup things here. So I'm gonna do one for my downloads folder. And the path is going to be browse, and then I'll find that share that I set up for download. There we go, we just call it download, because that's what it is. Um, you can have authentication, yes or no. If you're doing this at home, you know what? I always recommend authentication. Just I'm going to do yes. And then we'll need to uh, add a, a name and password here. So you can set this up as anything you want. This is just for your rsync module, a name and password. So set up something that you're going to remember with a name and password. You can always come back and change this. But there we go. I've got one already set up. So there we go. Now I've created that. I'm going to do one more just for my games folder. And you can do as many as you need. Authentication, yes. And we still have that same user there, so we can use the same one for each to make sure that no one uh, gets access. So there we've created these download modules. Now we need to go back to our old NAS, and we need to make sure that rsync is turned on. rsync server enabled. There we go. Now we can click on our backup and restore settings up here. And create a new rsync right here at the top, rsync. Remote sync. And we're going from our Asus Tor NAS to another. But it'll work with any rsync compatible server, so you can just click on this if you have another rsync or another server, another brand or whatever, um, or even you know sending it to a friend's house and you have their IP address and stuff, you can do all that. You can sync it up easily. But since we're going Asus Tor to Asus Tor, click on that. We need the server address. This is for our new server. And then the port number. You can change this if you like. I usually change it from the default to something else. And the username and whatever password you set up. If you wanna make sure that it's very secure, you can do encrypted using SSH. 
I'm not going to do that because I'm just doing this at home. For about 15, 20 seconds, uh, we're here. And now I can say, okay, I wanted to do my download folder. And I want to use one-to-one -one folder synchronization. There we go. I just click on download. It's going to do synchronize everything inside there, which is what I want because I'm, I'm syncing up one share to another share. Next. And now this is selecting the backup job that we created. And that's why we have to create these backup jobs down here on the bottom so that they'll appear here on the list and then we can easily back up one to the other. All right, there are our two backup jobs. Just pick the one that's correct, hit next. We can do backup now where we can schedule the backup. And if you wanna schedule it for the nighttime, cause this will use a little bit of your resources while it's you know copying and pasting things from one place to the, to the other. Or if you're just gonna like do a backup right now, you can hit now, hit next. And on this screen, you can title your backup. I'm just gonna title it download. That way I know that it's my download uh, share that's gonna be backing up from one to the other. If you want to keep this as a permanent backup, like if you're sending this to someone else or if you having a, a NAS that's acting as a backup for your primary NAS, well, you can do an archive mode. That way it will just add the new files um, as they're added. It won't continuously back up everything. Uh, keep file metadata just to make sure it's not really that big of a deal. And you don't really need to worry about anything else. Support sparse file, files replication, you don't need to turn that on. So everything else should be just fine. And I don't need any bandwidth limitations because I'm doing it locally. If you have some consideration for you know bandwidth, if you're doing it like over the internet, you may want to turn that on. And we hit next and we hit finish. As soon as we hit finish, it's going to start um, backing up and syncing from my NAS to my new NAS. So that's it. And you just do this as many times as you need to. And every time you do it, it'll back up one share to the other. And you're like, hey, all my stuff is here. So once you double check and all your stuff is on the new NAS and you're sure of it, you can just come over here and remove all of these, like just remove all the, the remote sync things. If you're only doing it once, but remote sync is a much better way than like opening up a browser and dragging and dropping, copying and pasting files. You don't wanna do that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's very simple, but I think a lot of people in the next video, I want to talk about hard drives, and which hard drives I've chosen and why. You may see something really cool here beside the hard drives that I have. See these, uh, these little things? If you drop down, we have an Iron Wolf health status on every one of the drives. I love this. So stay tuned for my video. I'm going to talk about why I'm using these Seagate Iron Wolf Pro drives, especially the 20 terabyte drives. They're huge. They're amazing. I'll make another video talking about that, but I'm going to compare it to some of the other uh, big hard drives on the market so you can make the best decision. And like I said, I this is what I've gone with. So you already know what my decision is, but you can find out why in the next video. So if you like old school chip tunes and DOS sounding music like MIDI and, and stuff like that, I do make music and my latest album's available on Bandcamp. Uh, you know what? Here's a sample. We'll let that play us out and we'll see you in the next video.